Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship today. This is the 10th Sunday of Pentecost. We pray that the Holy Spirit would move with us, in us, through us as we come together for this time of worship. And uh, I welcome you all. The flowers today brought to you by Lisa McKibben. And we thank you, Lisa, for bringing those. And uh, we joked about her doing it every Sunday for the rest of the year. And uh, she said, no, thank you. So uh, please, if you've got flowers at home or you are going by the Kroger's floral department, bring some in for Sunday. There's a sign up out in the hallway. I wanted to thank everybody and just recognize we had the bishop last week for our visit. It was a wonderful day. Uh, I was proud of both churches. We, uh, he posted on Instagram, the bishop did. He said, thank you, uh, Pastor Doug, and he named both churches, uh, offered himself and his wife, Janet, a warm welcome, which is us, significant gift to the fund that he has. So the leadership fund we announced last week, over $1,200, it's even more than that now. And of course you can continue to give to that if you feel so uh, desired or feel so called to do that. The Bishop's Fund is to help leaders in the future and uh, that's a good fund to invest in to consider. Um, Wheeler Elementary, as many schools do, start up this week and we want to remember Wheeler is our partner church and they are looking for hand sanitizer and uh, Kleenex and disinfectant wipes. Can you remember those three? The same three last spring we, we collected. If you're out and about, you can get those this week. Hand sanitizer, uh, tissue and disinfectant. Erica Hostetler has a birthday coming up this week and then uh, the bishop, I, just, I had this note here, he wrote on Instagram, let me step back just a second. He said he thanked us for the warm welcome, the retirement blanket, and a carry-in lunch that fit on many tables. So he applauded our efforts in all that we did to host him. Go ahead. Now a word from our uh, president, Jan Smith. Jan. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it occurred to me that I haven't been in front of you for a while, so I thought maybe I should talk. Anyway, in June we had a council retreat. Uh, we spent a Saturday uh, with uh, Pastor Nancy Nyland from the Senate. And uh, we worked with her on some of our top concerns that we have here at St. Andrews and what we might need to do um, you know, as we move into the future. Uh, knowing and always keeping in mind that whatever happens, it's always in God's hands. So. Um, we listed our concerns and then we placed stickers on them and uh, are now working on uh, looking at especially the top two, but I'll tell you what the top three were. So the first one was uh, we felt like uh, fellowship was in a very important part of uh, St. Andrews and uh, we feel like we needed to maybe spend a little more time together on a more casual basis than just coming to church. And so, you know, when you talk about fellowship, that also means food. So, uh, so we planned a couple of those opportunities in August and September. Uh, so, you know, so in, on August 11th, we'll, we're going to have a pitch in here after church, right after the 11 o'clock service, and at that time we'll have some conversation and concerns around our tables. So, we'll talk a little bit more about that um, when the time comes. On September 8th, uh, we thought we would have a fun time. Uh, having a picnic in the park at Meadowood. Um, it will include uh, fun and games and of course fried chicken and it also will be a pitch in. So hopefully you'll mark your calendars for those dates. Um, also on, in September on the 14th, um, this is a side note, uh, St. Andrews will be a stop on the Speedway Chocolate Walk uh, this is a walk to benefit the Tanya Isaac Foundation. It's a nonprofit here in Speedway to uh, benefit members of the Speedway community who might be uh, walking through the, um, a cancer journey. Um, what that entails for us is from one to five on that Saturday, I'll need volunteers to help pass out chocolate, uh, some type of chocolate, not Halloween candy, but some type of chocolate. Um, here at church because we'll be one of their 15 stops and just so you know if you, if you know any good chocolatiers let me know because uh, whoever uh, gets voted as the best place whoever gets the most votes will receive a trophy so you know anyway 
So that's, we're going to be a part of that, uh, again, walking with our community. We, uh, our number, our, one of our top three concerns also was becoming an RIC church, which stands for Reconciling in Christ. And we'll talk more about that on August 11th when we have our time for our conversation and concerns. Other things happening include sharing space as we continue getting everything in order for the Nigerian congregation that would like to use our upper room, otherwise known to most of us as the youth room upstairs. And we're also trying to arrange a meeting with the uh, St. John's Episcopal Church from here in Speedway to discuss sharing some of our space. And we also, um, last but not least, Jim Patton and I will be meeting with uh, some of the leaders of the Speedway, uh, of Speedway this week to see how we can partner with them again to walk with our community and share the love of Jesus. And um, of course, when we're doing all these things, we also need volunteers. So if any, you know, as, as we move forward, so we need people for, volunteers for building and grounds, hospitality, altar guild. So if, if anyone can volunteer for anything, it doesn't have to be a long, like a forever commitment, <clears throat> like Jim always says, uh, council is. But anyway, um, <laughs> but we need, we need some commitment, you know, like maybe a year at a time or a season at a time for building and grounds. And then um, I think that's it for right now. But also, would you pass your red pew pad so you can sign them and uh, we know that you were here today. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, the red pew pads that are there in the pew, if you would sign in, please. Just a note, we're continuing with our Fruits of the Spirit sermon series for this summer. And uh, as you can see, today it's faith, faithfulness. The folks at Faith really like, of course, they know me for fashion uh, trend setting. They ask a lot about why I'm wearing certain things. And uh, they want to maybe use this shirt for their September uh, project. And uh, I don't know why that matters to you, but, but so faithfulness. God is so very faithful. Let us be refilled in our own faithfulness. Let's take a moment just to uh, welcome the spirit among us and we'll begin service in just a one moment of silence. Come, Lord Jesus, and bless us in our time of worship. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, we are all fed and we are all nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, Father, Son, and Spirit, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven, and you are loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dearest Jesus, at your word is our gathering song. Let's sing.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and to share this bread with all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Events in 2 Kings happened hundreds of years before the time of Christ. Yet today's story is an Old Testament miracle at a time of famine and hunger that you will recognize. Although it looks like It got changed on me. So, first reading is in 1 John 1, 1 through 9. This is one of the later books, you know, not, not not one of the first four. This is later, um, in a later book in the New Testament. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The word of the Lord. Let us now read responsibly verses from Psalm 145 with praise. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, O Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. Peter, uh, Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus 
was likely written um, around 60 AD while he was in prison to the church in Ephesus. Ephesus um, he, he sent this to be um, sent on to other churches. Um, also something something like our monthly newsletter or e-news from Synod. <clears throat> uh, chapter 3, 14 through 21 is a prayer for the Ephesians after reminding them that they are Jews and Gentiles, members of one body in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Chapter 3, 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Friends, it's the Holy Gospel according to St. John in the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. So after Jesus had said all of this, he went out to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd kept following him because they saw what he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and he sat down with the disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was now taking place and it was near. Jesus looked up and he saw a large crowd coming. So Jesus said to Philip, where are we going to buy enough bread for all these people to eat? Jesus said this to test him, for he knew what he was going to do. Philip said, well, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to have just a little. So one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to the Lord, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down in the grassy area. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. They gathered them up, and from the fragments, the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled up twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, 
This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. And Jesus realized that they were talking about him and they were going to come and take him by force and make him king. He withdrew by himself to a quiet place. When evening came, his disciples went down in the sea. They got in the boat and they started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed out about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. And Jesus said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. It is I, do not be afraid. They took him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The gospel of the Lord. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Children can come forward for a time with Miss Suzanne this morning. What a blessing. Good morning. You can hear, wait a minute, try again. Good morning. Such a beautiful sound. I love hearing that. It's so pretty. Come on up, sweetheart. There's a room for everybody. Well, I'm so glad to see all of you this morning. And today is about something called faithfulness. Does anybody have an idea? What does it mean to be faithful? Any idea? It's kind of an unusual word. It means no matter what happens, somebody or something will be with you. So no matter what happens, here's what I'm going to tell you this morning. Jesus will be with you and everybody out there. You see all the people out there? Now, the story that we heard this morning that Pastor Doug just read talked about having enough food for lots and lots of people. And I have something here. Does anybody remember what's in, what was inside of this last week? Marbles. Do they sound like marbles? No, it doesn't. I have something different this week. I'm going to show you what it is. Ready? <gasps> what is that? Goldfish. Now, here's what I want to ask you. Look, see how many are in there? Do you think that I could feed everybody out there with this many goldfish? I don't think so. Do you think you can? No. But if we have enough faith, we can feed everyone, and that's what Jesus tells us. He has faith in us, and we can have faith in one another. So, you have a job this morning. Are you ready to do your job? I have something here, if Mrs. Gabor can get it. Does it sound like marbles? Does it sound like marbles? There's something inside. I have something that you can share maybe feed some of the people out there. And I have one for each one of you. You think you can share? Okay, here we go. There's one for you. And one for you. Oh, it's like a little miracle here. There we go. And let's say a prayer together. Thank, thank you, God, for being faithful to us and giving us your son, Jesus. And help us to be faithful to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Miss Suzanne. Those are wonderful. I want to say a, a word of thanks uh, to Jim for operating our Facebook system today and a good morning to our Facebook family of faith. If you're watching, either if it's later or with us live, please get bread and wine, cracker and grape juice or something and commune with us when we have Holy Communion here in a few minutes uh, together. Always uh, starting off with something terrifically, fabulously, very, very funny, uh, as is the pattern uh, the story goes that this uh, rabbi and a priest had a car accident early on Sunday morning, a, a big crash, the light was, wasn't working, and they, they totaled their cars, but they were both okay, the rabbi and the priest, got out of the vehicles and, and were talking with each other, and 
the rabbi realized he was a priest and says, hey, I'm, I'm a priest and, and you're a rabbi. I, I, uh, it must have been God who kind of saved us and, and brought us here to this moment. And the priest said, well, yeah, I think it was. And he goes, you know what? I have, our cars are, are almost totaled, but I have a bottle of wine in the back seat that didn't get broken, says the priest. Well, the rabbi thought, well, let's have some. So the priest gets it out and takes a big old drink, about half of that bottle of wine, and he goes to hand it to the rabbi, and the rabbi puts the cap back on it, hands it back to the, the priest just as the police were showing up. He says, well, I'll, I'll take my drink right after the police report is done. So he won't be found liable. Well, we, uh, you know, it, it, we're inundated in every area of our life by new information and new items to consider in our daily life. Uh, Jack and Bobby aren't here today. The sites are members over at Faith. Uh, they attend when the service time changed. They both had some health concerns. But when I last visited, Jack had this, he found this, this online. It is the, it is the, to him, he believes this is the age of humans compared to dogs. So it's called, it doesn't have a title, he doesn't know where he got it. It's dated November of 2019, but it's supposed to be a new formula on how to calculate the age of your dog compared to yourself. He, in this deal, it says one dog year is 31 human years. And it goes on down through the chart, seven dog years equals 62.1 human years and so on. It gets a little closer in terms of our belief that it's seven of our human years equals one dog year, but this chart, Jack printed off, gave me a copy, didn't know where it came from, didn't know where he got it, but he believed it as the current way, a new way to look at the age of your dog based on our human, our human years. And I said, Jack, you know, really, we don't know the source, we don't know where this came from, we really can't trust it. I'm not sure that we can expect it to be true that I could really have faith in that or belief because I don't know the source. Now, we can say that about many things in life, but this new formula to calculate the age of your dogs, I, I don't want to mess with that seven-year thing that's been in place for centuries. But if a piece of news comes through Walter Cronkite, oh, then we would have believed that. He was seen as the most trusted man in America. If that source was Walter Cronkite on some new news, we would take that. And I don't know about you, but where we look for our news today or where we get information, uh, we have to be sure to take it through our spiritual, you know, ways of, of being in the world to see if it really is something that can be uh, believed. But according to a recent study, nurses, and we have some in the building with us, are seen as very trustworthy and believable. Believable is not the right word. Trust, you can have faith in them, in all of the medical professional Folks, we're also in this survey as ones that you can have faith in and believe what they say. Saw the dentist this week, and when she puts up my x-ray and shows the black, white, black, white, black, white, maybe a few fillings in there for Doug, but no cavities in my visit. But all that she, all that she tells me about this x-ray, I believe, because I'm not a dentist, and I don't know how to read the x-rays. And so we have, in a recent survey, we really have a high level of faith, and trust and belief in the medical profession. And in nurses and teachers also got high regard. We're thinking today about faith, faithfulness. Who do you or what do you have faith in in your life? Believe it or not, it's not real complicated like many of these fruits of the spirit. We all exercised faith today when we came to church. I'll bet none of you, if you came up on a hill or uh, uh, something like that, stopped your car, got out, ran up to the top of the hill to look over and make sure cars were on their other side. You, by faith, you went up over the little hill and drove on. We take it by faith and pray that that's the case uh, every time we drive. When you sat down, you had faith, whether you believed it or not, that the pew was going to hold you. Now, maybe that comes from years and years of experience, but we activated faith in a, some ways in everyday life in everything that we do. And so today it's about faithfulness, being full of faith, if you will. In defining the word faith, looking it up, it means to have a confident belief. Faith means to have a confident belief. I pray our confident belief is in Jesus Christ and God who had so much faith in you and I that sent Jesus to the earth 
to live for us, die, and then rise again. So we continue our study of the fruits of the Spirit during the summer. We've looked already at love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. And now we're on faithfulness. And then next week will be gentleness. That's a good one. Gentle Ben comes to mind. Gentleness. I don't know why I said gentle Ben. And then uh, self-control at the end to wrap it up. The fruits of the Spirit in our summer sermon series. So faith. We live in that faith. It means to have lasting loyalty. It means to be dedicated, to be steadfast, to give your allegiance, to be constant, and to be devoted are all synonyms and words that help define faithfulness. If you were to look up the word itself, faithfulness, it's a firm devotion to God. A firm devotion to God or a confidence in God. In Isaiah, faithfulness is the sash around his waist in describing Jesus. In Revelation, the writer is called faithful and true in a vision that he sees. Christ is faithful, says Hebrews. Let love and faithfulness never leave you, writes Proverbs to us. And then Jesus in Matthew talks about justice, mercy, and faithfulness as being important in daily living. We heard it today in our readings uh, from Scripture. First John talks about the Lord having that faithfulness, calling him, he is our faithfulness. Jesus is our faithfulness in daily living, says John. We recognize some of those words, don't we, from uh, previous ways we have done confession and absolution. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Might sound familiar. As a little by the way, all the words of liturgy that we use come from scripture. And then 1 John writes that if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful, will forgive us and cleanse us from everything that's wrong. The psalmist today lifted up faithfulness. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words today. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words today. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians that Christ may dwell in our hearts through our faith through our faithfulness. And so it's so common, it's everyday words, of course. These, by the way, as you know, these are all gifts that God has given us. Uh, faithfulness and all of the fruits of the Spirit are gifts God has given us for us to then live out into daily living. So we're faith-filled by God so we can live out faithfulness in our daily living. Loving one another, serving, feeding, reaching out, all of the things that we do. So that in our gospel lesson today, Jesus is really kind of trying to trick the disciples, Philip in particular. Where are we going to get enough food to feed all these people, he says. And they say, you know, even six months wages wouldn't be enough. So the disciples, like maybe some of the times we feel a little anxious and worried about how this is going to go, they then know that to ultimately rely on Jesus, that Jesus knew what he was going to do, that he is the bread of life, he is eternal life, he is the gift of life. So in verse 11, Jesus took that bread, he gave thanks to God, and in faithfulness, he distributed it to all of the people. In faithfulness, he distributed that to all the people, not so they were all filled, not until they were done serving, but the Bible says till they were all satisfied. All our needs, all our worries, all our anxieties are satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, everybody? Are you with me? Just checking on you. And then I think, you know, we can look to that, to the Lord, and, and here in the next couple Sundays, these are going to be called the Bread Sundays. Uh, these are uh, Sundays where the lectionary uses the bread theme about Jesus uh, several times uh, to make sure, I guess, we get it or to celebrate it. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, not for lunch, not for when we're hungry, but the deeper emptiness in us. The deeper pain that we hold, the deeper issues, he is the bread of life, cleansing, filling those empty holes and giving us new life in him. Bethlehem, as you'll remember, is a name that means the house of bread. Jesus comes from the house of bread, placed in a manger, a feeding trough, and then later calls himself the bread of life to feed us daily with grace and love, peace, the fruits of the spirit, love and joy, kindness, patience, and goodness, so that we can then give that out into the world. I really think as I looked over the gospel and talked about it in, in circles this week with 
colleagues and things. There are so many opportunities in a gospel lesson like this that's 20 verses long and many jumping off points. You know, there's, they fill up 12 baskets after the, after the party and there's 12 disciples and you could launch off on that and go different directions. But I was just drawn to the very end of the story for today where Jesus comes to them on the water. I know that's an odd way to look at it or think about it, but nonetheless, we have it in scripture. He comes and they are afraid and terrified. Now, again, jump into the story for a minute. If you were in that place, now I can imagine fear, but it would be like, like it's the Lord. It's, oh, man, that's awesome. You know, I mean, we celebrate. Uh, pop open the, the beers. You know, have a good time. Party. Oh, sorry, that's, I got carried away. But it's the Lord coming to them across the water. And Jesus says, it's I. It is I. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And then to us, in our anxieties and our worries, in our ups and our downs, it is me. Don't be afraid. And that's the good news for us today, that Jesus is with us. We can be faithful because of God's faithfulness in us and God's love for us. And that's a gift that we have today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. It is me. It is I. Do not be afraid. O living bread from heaven. Let's sing. Please stand as you're able. Let's sing with joy. Let us now confess our common Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, and together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth.
One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of generations, you work in us far more than we can ask or imagine. Bless the church you have called into being across time and space and fill it with the power of the Spirit for loving service. In your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As grains of wheat grow upon the earth and fish swim in the waters, sustain your creation. Protect harvests and give every person food in due season. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God beyond borders, you rule all in all. Bless the work of humanitarians and peacekeepers. Shield those who live, work, or serve in harm's way. And bring an end to war and conflict. Especially in Ukraine and Israel, Gaza. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. We remember any who are sick or suffering, families in our community who endure hunger, those who seek asylum or citizenship, and our beloved for whom death is near, and those we name now in our hearts or aloud. Mia. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, you root us and ground us in love. As you inspired our ancestors in this place in their ministry, sustain us also in new endeavors that your glory may be made known and your loving kindness shared anew. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, your love in Christ surpasses all knowledge. We give thanks for the departed who have come to know the fullness of your grace. Join our voices with theirs and all the saints in singing your praises. In your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Turn in faithfulness and share it with one another. Oh, friends, our service will continue now as you can be seated. As we sing, uh, we are an offering, 692, in thanksgiving to God. 692, we are an offering. Let's sing. And you may be seated for it, as you are already. Just...
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. Please stand for this part of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, and it's our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who opened us up to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also to remember me. Remembering our Lord, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come at the direction of the ushers. You may be seated. Friends, just a reminder as we start communion, it's a, this is the Lord's table, so we'll just take our time and enjoy together.
And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And friends, just before the final blessing, there's a lot going on within our congregation. If you have any questions, ask your shepherd or any council member anytime. We're here for you and together as we serve the Lord. And now the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, fills us with faith, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Faith of our fathers, our sending song. It's 813 if you're using the bulletin. 813, let's sing. Guided by the Spirit, we share the love of God, of Jesus, and walk with our community. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.